you know what? Before we start, I'm going to look at what ramen talk it is so I don't look like an idiot. First things first, before I start the video, um, I do need to mention my top. Look at it. So, if you don't know, um, there's an account on TikTok called Knuckabump Farms. And basically, it's this woman. I don't know what her name is. What is her name? Can't remember. But she runs a farm and with, like, so many animals on and. The TikToks that uh, went viral for her is the ones of her emu, Emmanuel. And she's trying to educate people on, like, farm animals and whatever, whatever. But Emmanuel keeps trying to knock the phone down. And it's just so freaking hilarious. Because her catchphrase is, Emmanuel, don't do it. So that's why I've got Emmanuel, don't do it, on my dish. And it's really cool. And she just released merch. And I'm all about helping other creators. So, obviously, I bought... A t-shirt so you know go check out her channel it's hilarious we're gonna get on to today's video which is a ramen talk and it is ramen talk number 21 i believe and the ramen we're trying this week as my room is so messy and dog hairy <laughs> um is this one black garlic oil tonkotsu flavor noodles I don't know what Tom Cops is, so let's have a look. Pig bone. Oh, okay. Um, it's made by boiling pork meat and bones together, thus creating a thick and hearty broth with a meaty flavour. The soup usually has a milky consistency. That's not a thing you want to hear, really, is it? <laughs> I've cooked it slightly differently. I believe you're supposed to use I have a broth with this and I haven't because I don't really tend to go for brothy ramens because of you know slurping issues and also I like thick sauces as opposed to loose sauces um I've just what the hell is this look at this little character <laughs> he's got no pants on <laughs> okay hello um so instead of that I've added a green onion obviously I've obviously added a green onion and also I have um just put a little bit of water over the soup base so that it's not really soupy. And hopefully the flavour still comes out. And also, they look quite anemic, but just, you know. There we go. So let's try some. They just smell incredibly garlicky. Okay, here we go. Boy, slurped some all over me. <laughs> Oh yeah, these are lovely. Oh yeah. Mmm. These are gorgeous. Oh, I should be polishing these off. Because this is my lunch. By the way, if you can, if you think my hair looks really greasy, it's not. It's, I've just come out of the shower, so it's wet, so don't be rude. Okay. So, I haven't got loads to talk about today because, um, I don't know if you were living under a rock, but a pretty major thing happened recently. <laughs> um, so we will be talking about that because I would like to give my thoughts on the whole situation. So first thing I want to talk about is, uh, Blackpink's recent comeback. Now, uh, <laughs> God knows how long it's been like two years since the album and now we've got um Born Pink coming soon. But Blackpink's pre-release single, Pink Venom, dropped a few uh recall so ago. Now look, it's not a bad song. Pink Venom is not a bad song. But it just you know, after two years of doing absolutely no music. Well, I'm not counting their their solo ones because I really did not like either of their solo ones. Um, I guess fans were just expecting a little bit more because it follows the same pattern as How You Like That and other songs they've done, and it's just not. It's just not. It doesn't hit like the same as other some of their other songs and it's just a bit disappointing and I feel like why you could have done them a lot better than that. So 
Almost again the dance. Blackpink are skilled dancers and they just keep getting these boring dances that are so easy to do that don't show off their skills. So, I'd like to see them do... I'd like to see their, the title track for their actual album to be like really well produced and like different. Mmm, these are addictive things are. I might have to have another pack out. It's very, very garlicky. If you love garlic, I love garlic. Very, very garlicky. I actually think it would be nice with a broth, I'm gonna, not going to lie, I think it would. Because the garlic's so incredibly strong that that would just make the broth delicious. So next time it's going to have a broth. I'm nearly finished. <laughs> I'm going to be here, okay. Stop, okay. Next, I want to talk about, this, okay. Recently, a TikToker made a TikTok. He's deleted it now. Um, he basically asked an NMIX member, I think Sullyoon, um, on a date. She's a minor and he is like a fully grown ass man. Um, I'm not quite sure what he was thinking. I don't know whether it was like a bit or like whether he actually wanted to ask on a day or whatever. But like, why would you do that on TikTok? Especially to a minor. What I believe happened was he basically said, when you're in LA or whatever, I'd like to take her to dinner. And it's not fully clear whether she understood what he meant um, or what he said, but she just turned away and walked away. Um, so. Well done, Celine, for defusing that situation. Um, but like, that's weird. It's weird. Are you really thirst for? You really think Joe Mopey would let you take her on a date? And second of all, you're grown, and she is a child. <laughs> Stop being disgusting. Oh, men are so that's God, men just gross. JYP. Recently, it came to light that JYP had trademarked the name Misa Mo. This really excites me because Mi Samo is the abbreviation of Momo, Sana and Mina. The Japanese members of Twice. So people are like convinced that they're going to form a subunit of Twice called Mi Samo. And I'm all here, I'm just here for that. Completely. Because I've already had one soloist break out, which is Nayon. I don't think it'll be long before we see other soloists from Twice. And I'm very, very excited for a subunit called Misamo. They should have called it like Mim Mimosa. Oh my god, Mimosa. They're called Mimosa. That is that's what they're that's what they're gonna be called. They're gonna be called Mimosa. Mimosa. I'm just going to call them for most of forever now. Okay. I'm really excited. And if that's the case, um, I will be buying that stuff. Recently, we've had a change of Prime Minister. Boris Johnson's out. God for that. And Liz Truss is in, which I was honestly not following this at all because I couldn't give a monkeys. However, I was shocked that Rishi Sunak didn't win because I thought he was the more popular one. But I can't decide whether I like Liz Truss or not. I'm gonna preemptively say that I don't because like, I don't really like any politician, ever. Um, but I thought her speech was ridiculous, but also hilarious because what the hell was she talking about? <laughs> she started going on about um, her the UK's imports, and she basically said um, that at the moment we import two thirds of apples, nine tenths of our pears, and then two thirds of our cheese. And then there was like no talking for ages. And then she said, this is a disgrace. Really like seriously, like, like this was the most outrageous issue of today's society that we don't import enough cheese. Okay. <laughs> it's, 
So I'm getting the, you can kind of get the sense of what kind of Prime Minister she's going to be like. So, yeah. <laughs> Don't know whether we should look, we, we should take that as a good sign or not. Um, probably not to be honest, but you know. And let's get to the really important, really sad news. On Thursday the 8th of September, Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth II passed away. She kicked the bucket, she croaked. She met her demise. She gave up the ghost. She bought the farm. She's sleeping with the fishes. She's pushing up daisies. She bit the dust. She's plant food. She's dead, basically. Okay, I think you get the picture, she's dead. Um, now, I'm trying not to be disrespectful here because, like, regardless of anyone's opinions on the monarchy, um, she's, she still died at the end of the day, so it's not, you shouldn't speak ill of the dead. However, um, I would like to tell you my thoughts on the monarchy. <laughs> so, I really didn't have a problem with the Queen at all. I think she was really lovely, funny. I think she was just a lovely person. However, the same cannot be said for her husband or her little rat of a son. <laughs> so the monarchy in general, I don't like because I think they're twisted, I think they're corrupt. What they did to Harry and Meghan, in my opinion, was a bit much. Um, the way they treated Diana was horrible. And I think um, there's a lot of underlying secrets and things and the whole Prince Andrew thing like what the hell was that why why is he still a thing there's loads of reasons I think to hate the monarchy valid reasons but the Queen was an absolute legend so she will forever be missed I can't believe we lost Betty White and the Queen in the same year now the reason why I'm upset mainly about this is because that means we've got old big ears as King I like Kate, I like Harry and Meghan, I like all the other princesses and not so much the princes because that means Andrew. Um, Will, he's, o he's okay, um, but Charles and Camilla can go and get lost for all I care. Um, she ain't my queen and he is not my king. <laughs> he basically He's just not it. I mean, how can you treat someone like that that you're married to? He basically, I'm of the firm belief that Diana's death was not a coincidence, not an accident. But yeah, I just think he's not a very nice person. And obviously she's, <sighs> her, isn't she? <laughs> um, like, if I was William and Harry, I would not like Camilla at all. I'd be like, she ain't being in this royal family because that hoe bag. Or him. I'd be like, Dad, I've lost all and utter respect for you. Please get out of the monarchy. <laughs> That's what I would have done. Even if he was my son, I'd be like, I can't believe you did that. You're going to hell. Um, so, yeah, now he's king. Luckily, he's near death as well, so in like 20 years time, hopefully that will be hit him out of the way with. Um, but until then, I am ruled by no one. I shall not be singing the national anthem because long to reign over us does no longer reign true because I'm not having him tell me what to do. And um, it just doesn't hit the same, does it? God save the king, no. God save our gracious king. No, no, no. I'm not God saving him. I hope God doesn't save him. I hope God sends him directly to hell. So, yeah. Also the money. Um, I mean, the queen in her youth, she was stunning, wasn't she? Stunning. Prince Charles, sorry, King Charles, just... Well, um, he just wasn't, was he? First of all, I don't know what Diana saw in him. Um, 
Second of all, um, I don't want someone with like ears that are going to poke over the side of the money. So, how are they going to fit his head on a coin? Because it's quite big, isn't it, with the ears? So, you know. And if it's a side profile, his nose is not going to be. I mean, did you see that televised event? What was it? Him signing all that crap. And he was just like, there's a pen on the table, and he was just like, move it, move it. You have hands, move the pen. I just simply can't bring myself to touch this pen. Just, it's a pen, just move it. It's, it wasn't even in his way. It really wasn't in his way at all. I already hate him. Hate him so much. Okay, so, rest in peace, Queen. Take your son with you. Okay, now we're going to look at the underrated K-pop song of the week, month, whatever. And this week I've chosen Bouncy by Rocket Punch. Um, now, to be honest, this song didn't really do that at all. Um, it didn't win any music show wins though, which I thought was wrong. Because in my opinion, Bouncy is Rocket Punch's best song. And I'm obsessed with it. Um, I'm still obsessed with it today, so. But yes, I heavily recommend you go and listen to it. I don't think it got the traction it deserved. I think it was promoted well. It just, I think it was all against some strong competitors. Like, iZone was released there, Fiesta at the same time, so. Um, I'd like to give it some love. Also, this week we're going to be looking at the what the hell in the hell dance move was that. And this week is an obvious one. This week is Wannabe by Itzy. And you already know which one I'm talking about. Yes, it's Ryujin's shoulder move. Here it is. I mean, even the other members struggle to do that. And if you look at compilations of idols doing it, they struggle to do it too. How do you move your shoulders that fast? I mean, I don't really particularly have a lot of fat on my shoulders right now, but still, <laughs> can't do it. I mean, use everything wobbles, so. <laughs> how do you do that Ryujin how do you do that it's it's like inhuman this week I'm not going to do the um, K-pop group of the month I'm going to be doing a different segment I'm introducing a new segment called Bitchin' B-Sides apologies for any children listening to that <laughs> so I'm going to basically so the underrated K-pop song of the month was title tracks and this one is going to be showing you a b-side now obviously i can't play it because i'll get copyrighted but um for this one i'd like to recommend a b-side to you so i'm obviously going to start with twice <laughs> hello um and one of if not my favorite korean b-side of twice's is a song called turn it up now this was on the fancy you album that they released in 2019 and my goodness it's a good song just amazing. The dance, I believe, um, that they did for it with, I think that was on their recent tour, I think could be better. But if you disregard that, because it's not really a song that has a dance, it's a B-side, then I think it's amazing. I think I was so hoping that they would like promote this at some point or like perform it at least once on a music show because it's so amazing, this song is. Can you tell I think it's amazing? <laughs> now it's time to look at the comebacks and the upcoming comebacks. I do just want to finish these because I'm absolutely obsessed with them. Oh my god, that's so disgusting. I have literally just licked this bowl clean. <laughs> that was so delicious. I'm literally going to have another one straight after it. Okay, so comebacks and upcoming comebacks. The website I used recently was K-pop Map and lately their website has been like malfunctioning or whatever i don't know what's going on with the website but it's not working that well so i've been using a different website called k-pop official on the 19th we have blackpink releasing pink venom the same day we had one ho releasing a university music song called don't hesitate and fatu also from black swan released her own mixtape called pwapf with the title track Castle Key. On the 22nd, we've got Ivy 
releasing their third single album called Afterlog. Now I need to talk about this because Ivy's new song Afterlog has become an obsession beyond an obsession. Now you know I get obsessed about songs. This one I was immediately hooked when I, my sister um, told me the Friday before, um, have you heard Ivy's teaser uh, music video teaser? And I was like, no, why? And she was like, it samples I Will Survive. I love I Will Survive. And I was like, oh, okay, well, we need to listen to it right now. And then I did, and I was obsessed. And then I listened to the highlight med medley, and I was obsessed. And then the music video came out, and I was literally so in love with it. Everything about it. The dance was amazing. I love the colouring. I love how they all have different colours. And then they're promoted with the different colours as well. That's just amazing. I'm obsessed with this song so bad, and I will forever be obsessed with this song. So... I didn't think they could top Love Dive, and they have, absolutely, and I don't think they'll top this, but I bet they will. So, lovely, l much love to Ivy, let's move on, before I um, fill up another 29 minutes talking about Ivy. Um, sorry, I keep saying Ivy, it's Ivy, isn't it? I can't not say Ivy for some reason. Right, so, on the same day on the August 22nd, Six came back with their fifth EP album, OK, title track 458. On the 23rd, we have Leo from Vix coming back with his third mini album titled Losing Game. JB released a song called Rockin' Chair. On the 24th, we've had uh, Blankety come back. I think that's how you pronounce it. With a second mini album, Key 2Y2, Passion Fuego. <sighs> with the title track, Fuego, Burn It Up. JB and Young J released a song um, called Closer. 25th, DKB released their fifth mini album title uh, with a fifth minute album autumn title track 24 7 and 26 we have twice coming back with a title track talk that talk uh 11th minute album that is between one and two obsessed um mark twan released his first full album the other side far away now i need to talk about this for one second i love mark to death his singing has improved it's not the best still but it's improved but i really didn't care for his album because every single song sounded the same. Don't come for me in the comments because it's true. Anyway, Seventeen released their um, song Underscore World, this time featuring Anne Marie. 29th, Tempest released their second mini album Shining Up, title Can't Stop Shining. Rocket Punch released their second single album Flash, which I obsessed with that song as well. I didn't realise they were releasing that song until the day they released it. Um, 30th, Solar and Moonbull, Moon Buell formed a subunit of Mamamoo called Mamamoo Plus with the title track Better featuring Big Naughty. And Key also released his second single, uh, second full album Gasoline with the title track Gasoline. 31st, Billy's come back with a third mini album The Village of Perception Part 2 with the title track Ring My Bell, What a Wonderful World. That's a cracking song that is, good rock song that is. And now for September, not gonna lie, September's been very dry so far very dry obviously we've got blackpink coming up we've got some good ones coming up but um, it's been quite dry so far so 5th of september okay 5th of september one us came back with an eighth mini album malice titled same scent and that's it <laughs> 6th of september um and hyphen released a song called one in a billion busters came back with the title broken clock On the 8th, Ravi came back with the album Love and Holiday, title track Dum Dum Dum. And on the 9th, which was not yesterday therefore, um, Jackson Wang released his album A Magic Man with the title track Blue. And I watched his music video for, was it Cruel? I think, and that was just like a film. Um, and then we've got upcoming comebacks, which again is very dry still um so Weki Meki's Chue Yu Jung is debuting as a solo artist with her first single album Sunflower I would like Weki Meki to come back as well so that's probably not going to happen for in a month or two <laughs> why are we slowing down Weki Meki's comebacks I mean hello it's Weki Meki um and then sorry I'm off to the side I don't know why I'm off to the side and then Dia are also releasing a song on, on September 14th called Rooting For You, which will be their last release before they disband. Iris are coming back with um, Stay With Me on the same day, and Pentagon on the same day, 14th September, are doing a Japanese mini album. 15th of September, Sorn is coming back with a song called Nirvana Girl featuring Yin. I have seen that Sorn, Yin, and Sungyeon are doing something. I don't know whether that's this, but 
very excited for that. Um, on the 16th, we've got black pen, black, black venom, black pink coming back with born pink with the title track shut down. On September 16th, we've got NCT 127 coming back with their fourth album, title track Two Baddies. Um, and then on the 16th, we've also got a new group called Mimi, Mimi Rose, I don't know how you say that, debuting with their title track Rose. The Rose are also coming back with um, a song called Childhood on the, on the 16th. On the 19th, we've got Nmix coming back with their second single album, Entworth, whatever that means, with the title track Dice. 21st is when JB will be releasing his second EV album called Be Yourself. On the 22nd, Lapalus is coming back with Gratata. On the 26th, Sumin, or Shumin, or however you say his name, from EXO is debuting as a soloist with an album, the first mini album called Brand New. Cravity is coming back on the 27th with their fourth mini album, New Wave. Luna will be coming back on the 28th with their, hopefully with all the members, I mean we don't know. That's another thing by the way, why the hell has Blockberry not stopped their tour? They've literally got less than half of the members currently performing. They're all ill. Stop it, let them recover. Seriously, Blockberry, not psych. Anyway, they're coming back on the 28th with a Japanese single called Luminous. And guys, I've just been informed that on the 29th, EXID is coming back with their 10th anniversary single album. I'm very excited for that. So yeah. Um, I don't know if we've got any upcoming ones. Um, Oh, a group on the 28th, uh, 29th called Limelight is debuting. I'm not sure who that's with, but, um, and that's it for this ramen talk. This is quite a long one, isn't it? Go on. Well, I said we'd have a lot to talk about. I mean, I went on with about the Queen and Prince Charles for a lot because I just had a lot to say, but anyway, um, yeah, I recommend these. These are very addictive, very, very addictive. I ate it almost instantly and I licked the bowl clean. And I'm going to have some more because I just can't get enough of them. And I'm also going to listen to Ives Afterlog again because it's an amazing song. Oh my God, what the hell is that? Okay, ignore the Rudolphness is going on. Also ignore the music that's just started in the background. That's next door. I've had that for like six weeks straight. <laughs> so, goodbye. Oh my God, look at my nose. Bye.